Well, how do that jump to Zai? Captain of the station today, chums, I've got myself a cup of tea. You probably noticed I've also got myself a new piece of headwear. Yes, this is a tinfoil hat. That means we're going to be moving into the realms of conspiracy theory. Anyway, I'm going to have myself a little swig of this tea. Ooh, and then I'm going to be telling you exactly why I'm wearing this silvery hat and what conspiracy theory we're covering, people in the view of us. So this isn't a conspiracy theory that you've probably heard before online. It's probably something you've heard whispers of and suggestion of. But um, it's more sort of along the lines of the lyrics to Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles. Now, a lot of people have said that Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds if you take the first letter of all the main words, just Lucy Sky Diamonds, it spells LSD, which, you know, is a psychotropic substance which was quite popular amongst the time of the Beatles being out. I'm not going to say they partaked, but they probably may have done. Don't know. You know, that's assumptionating, isn't it? Assumptionating isn't even a word, but we're going with it anyway. But I've got a different idea on what that may mean. And um, I'm going to be going over what I think it may mean, because when I heard these songs, I was quite later in life. I, I didn't really get into the Beatles until I was like in my mid-twenties, thirties. And um, yeah, I, I've got a different take. I've got a different take. So let's just jump into it, shall we? OK, so let's just go on over and go to my analysis. There we are. Ba -ba -dum -dum. Boom. Um, actually, let's, let's make me on the actual screen. Put me on the screen. Put me on the screen. Chikabow. There we go. I'm on the screen now, people. And that makes it a little bit bigger for you in the view of us. Trust your women win amp that down there pumping out some music. Now, warning, I may break into song. I may start singing during this. I guess I will. Anyway, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Here's the lyrics itself. But before we get into this too much, so it makes a bit more sense, I'm going to look at the lyrics of I Am The Walrus. But I'm just going to jump down on here quite quickly because there's this little paragraph here. Mr. City Policeman sitting. Pretty little policeman sitting in a row. Look how they fly like Lucy in the sky. See how they run. I'm crying. I'm crying. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> half, half spoken, half, half sort of sung. I'm not the most lyrical. But there we go. See how they fly like Lucy in the sky see how they run and it's talking about the policemen so talking about people in authority people that lay down the law of the common man people that oppress people perhaps lucy in the sky with diamonds i don't think it's a reference then is it it's not lucy in the sky they just call it lucy in the sky there so there's no actual freaking diamonds there anyway but it's lucy in the sky so where have we seen lucifer in the sky because i think lucy is short for lucifer and when you look at it there's lucifer falling from heaven amongst the night sky with freaking diamonds mate lucy in the sky with diamonds i think they're talking about lucifer falling from heaven but not only that when you link luciferianism you come up with luciferianism and also the illuminati yes and the whole sort of control through the elitists of the world people so there we go, the Illuminati then leads you into the New World Order and you start going down all that sort of sort of shenanigans and you come across other people wearing the same headwear as me. Yeah, um, I don't know where you can see him actually. I think I'm covering him up a little bit. Let me just jump over to this one here. Boom. You can see this little chap over here. Let's make him a little bit bigger on screen for you. There you go. Look, he's got the same headwear as me. Fashionable guy. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> New World Order Illuminati card. All right, fine. Brilliant. Yeah, it goes down this whole sort of wabbit roaring of, okay, you're crazy, you're a tinfoil hat wearer, and um, I'm no longer going to listen to you. If you've already sort of turned off at this point, people, that's a shame, because it, it does get better. Honest, it does. Anyway, let's jump on back on over to Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Picture yourself in a boat on a river with tangerine trees and marmalade skies. Well, yep, you got all this sort of hints of yellow and marmalade. It sort of feels like it might be trickly sort of, I don't know. Anyway, somebody calls you, you answer quite slowly. It's a girl with kaleidoscope eyes. Now, the whole kaleidoscope eyes type thing, 
When you look at a lot of Luciferian sort of references and the Illuminati, there's always the all-seeing eye, isn't there? And with the whole kaleidoscopy type stuff going on, maybe it's different dimensions closing in on one another, but we'll get to that in a moment. Cellophane flowers of yellow and green, towering above your head. Look for the girl with the sun in her eyes and she's gone. Okay, so now it goes to the girl with the sun in her eyes rather than kaleidoscope eyes. The sun in the eyes, I often think of this, the eye of Ra. Okay, anyway, let me just uh, put myself back onto the tin web screen there so you can see this text a little bit bigger. So I think that might be references to the ancient Egyptians and things. And there's all sorts of weird theories about the building of the pyramids and that they couldn't be done with the tools that they had back then. And could they levitate rocks and all sorts of other stuff? That almost warrants a video in its own sort of right. So yeah, if you do want to see me do a video on the pyramids and all that sort of shenanigans, you know, let us know in the comments. Hit a like and all that sort of shenanigans. Anyway. Then it just goes on, Lucy in the sky with diamonds, blah, 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 blah. Follow her down to a bridge by a fountain where rocking horse people eat marshmallow pies. This one is, that one line is freaking mental, okay? So rocking horse people, a rocking horse is a fake horse, right? Yeah, so rocking horse people, fake people, eat marshmallow pies. Well, marshmallow pies, if you look up how to make ambrosia, which is what the Greeks had that they said granted all more immortality and all sorts of special powers and all sorts of weirdness look up ambrosia and the greeks but yeah it's pretty darn interesting also rocking horse could be a reference to rockefellers now the rockefellers are supposed to be one of the heads of the snakes of the illuminati you know so we had rothschilds or rockefellers and all sorts of others if you start looking into conspiracy theories all these sort of terms come up but rocking horse people fake people that eat marshmallow pies the elitists that are seeking on immortality everyone smiles as you drift past the flowers that grow in so incredibly high now this is pretty odd. I mean, it talks about, you know, yellow and green with these flowers, these cellophane flowers that grow incredibly high. It's almost like otherworldy. It's like they're no longer inside of good old Blighty. They're somewhere else. Well, when Lucy fell from the sky, when Lucifer fell from the sky, he was banished to the realm of Nod, which some say could be inside of our own planet, which we'll get to that in a moment. Yes, we're going to touch on the Hollow Earth, people. Heck yes, we are, and the Garfo and all that sort of loveliness. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, Newspaper taxis appear on the shore, are waiting to take you away. Climb in the back with your head in the clouds and you're gone. Okay, so that's a bit weird, isn't it? Newspaper taxis. Well, what sort of taxis that appear on the shore that whisk you away and put your head in the clouds? I'm going to say UFOs, mate, because UFOs appear in the freaking newspapers. Heck yes, they do. And they're going to be taking you away. Now, if you've watched my other video on the diary of Richard Admiral Byrd, he flies into the inner sanctums of the world and gets accosted by UFOs and taken down to speak to the people that reside inside of the Earth, which, funny enough, and they've got blonde hair and blue eyes and yeah it's pretty darn freaking weird people anyway i put that video just above me right there so go hit that one up the diary of richard admiral bird it's freaking crazy and i think it ties into all of this i mean he was a naval officer and the beatles actually sing about a yellow submarine and and all that sort of stuff and going out to sea but we'll touch on that one in a moment too the Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds, picture yourself on a train in a station with plasticine porters with looking glass ties. Suddenly somebody is there at the turnstile. It's the girl with the freaking kaleidoscope eyes, mate. Again, there she is at the turnstile. So yeah, it looks like this sort of whatever it is, this UFO is coming to some sort of station. It does say train station, but a train isn't a taxi either. But yeah, this must be some sort of station for these UFOs to land in. But it looks like you're being heavily sort of monitored because they've got looking glass ties. So yeah, you're going to be sort of monitored as you get there. You're going to go through a turnstile to get into there. So it almost alludes that this place is a place of interest and a place that's heavily guarded and under security, perhaps. Yeah, but again, again, you've got this girl with the kaleidoscope eyes, the eye of Ra, all that sort of stuff. Could it be ancient technology that gets you into the realm of sort of the, in the sanctums of the world? But anyway, I'm going to go back to <laughs> the lyrics of I am the walrus. OK, so here we go. I am you as we are we and we are. Well, OK, I am he as you are he as we are me and we are all together 
Okay, so that kind of says that we are all the one same person, some sort of sea of consciousness, to me anyway, or the all-seeing eye. See how they run like pigs from a gun, see how they fly, I'm crying. Well, that ties into that very first one that we sort of looked at there about, you know, the whole thing with the, um, yeah, like, and pigs from a gun, and they're talking about policemen here. Well, another sort of reference to police is calling them pigs. Not that I ever would. No, I've got a lot of respect for the police officers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll just make that clear. If you're watching, police officers. Yeah, I didn't just uh, say that. It's it's in the lyrics. <laughs> Sitting on a cornflake, waiting for the land to come. So it's almost like you've lost your mind and you're waiting for them to come and take you to a mental institute. Because if you talk about this stuff op openly, that's what, what's going to happen. You need to hide the truth in allegory. And where better to do that? Inside a freaking song lyrics, mate. Yes, Corporation T-shirt, Stupid Bloody Tuesday, man, you've been a naughty boy. You've let your face grow long. So yeah, if you go and tell the freaking truth, yeah, you, know, you need to tell lies. Your face is growing long, like freaking Pinocchio. And the only reason you're doing that is because you're wearing the Corporation's T-shirt and you're staying freaking stupid. You know, and if you go and say the truth, you've been a naughty boy. And you're going to be hit on up by the freaking police. They're going to come at you like the freaking out of a gun, mate. Thank you, yes. Yes, I am the Eggman, they are the Eggman, I am the Walrus. I think this is quite important too, because when you look at sort of origins of man, we're supposed to have evolved from apes, pretty much. I like the aquatic ape theory more so than, you know, the theory of evolution. But what if there was some sort of, I don't know, higher race that came to us, took eggs of, you know, of, of creatures on the planet, like I know some sort of primate, yeah, primate, and then got the DNA of a walrus, as well as their own sort of eggs and their own sort of DNA, spliced it all together, and made us. What if we're man... Well, what if we're made by freaking aliens, mate? That's kind of what I'm getting from that. I am the Eggman. They are the Eggman. The aliens are the Eggman. So alien DNA amongst walrus DNA made us. I mean, we are a primate of sorts, but we've got a fat layer where a lot of other primates don't, hence why I like the aquatic ape theory. And also when you look at where hair growth grows on, on people, you know, we've got mustaches. There's not many other primates out there with a freaking mustache, is there? You know, it's almost like we've been made. So water beads off of our eyebrows and goes round and misses the mouth as well. It's almost like we've got hair in the same places as freaking walruses, not freaking primates, unless you look at the capuchin, but just rule those out. <laughs> OK, cool. Mr. C City Policeman sitting little policeman sitting in a row. And it's that same sort of, um, you know, that same bit that we got talked about earlier. Yellow matter custard dripping from a dead dog's eye. Well, again, this is sort of almost like the Eye of Ra. And you've got that sort of, you know, the trickle of tear coming down the Eye of Ra. And when you look at Egyptian sort of uh, gods and things, a lot of them have got dog-shaped faces. So that's, that's another sort of thing there. Almost a reference, in my eyes, to the Eye of Ra. Crab and lock a fish wife, pornographic peace, priestess. Boy, you've been a naughty gal. You've let your knickers down. Okay, right. Well, that's that's a little bit freaking weird to be in here, isn't it? But that, to me, almost screams um, end of the world scenario. You know, the the whole horror of Babylon rising from the sea, heading onto land, and then bringing about the apocalypse. Uh, a little bit worrying, that one. Um, but yeah, it's the only reference to this in here, and I don't know why it's in here, but that's what I get from it. Anyhow, maybe that the Eggman ap appear on the surface of the Earth every time there's an apocalyptic type event that's about to hit mankind. So maybe when there's a pole shift where the North Pole becomes the South Pole, maybe these UFOs come out from inside of our world and come and you know, beam up a load of humans and then wait and then come back again and repopulate the Earth after the pole shift, almost like an arc. Huh. Yeah, Noah, he lived for 800 years. Did he have some imbrosia pies? Marshmallow pies, people? Maybe, who knows? <laughs> Sitting in an English garden, waiting for the sun. If the sun doesn't come, you get a tan from standing in the English rain. Well, are you talking about a pole shift there, mate? You know, because if the poles do reverse, what happens with the sun? There's going to be loads of freaking volcanoes going off. It's going to be encompassed in sort of soot and dust. I don't know whether you'd see the sun for quite a many few days. And there's going to be massive great big freaking storms. Again, is that a reference to the apocalypse and the sun not coming? And also, when you think of the Illuminati and the Luciferians, they're sun worship. And if the sun doesn't come, 
you know, is it the end of days? I am the Eggman now, good sir. They are the Eggman, a poor man made to tame a fortune's blows. I am the walrus. Goo-goo-goo-joob. goo goo the joob It was almost like they're trying to say about Google, being one of the you know, corporations, but they couldn't have predicted the future. Or could they? Who knows? Expert, expert, choking smokers, don't you think the joker laughs at you? See how they smile like pigs in the sty. See how they snide. I'm crying. Well, I think this is all to do with the, um, you know, the whole thing with the monetary system being an ethos system. It's not really based on anything. You know, it's 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 a strange system, that monetary system. Again, it's run by the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds, and they're just laughing at us all inside of this make-believe world that they've created. Money is a man-made thing, and greed is the thing that keeps us from evolving and moving forwards. If we didn't have so much greed, I'm fairly sure we would have solved sort of the energy crisis and all sorts of stuff. If we just listened to freaking Nicholas Tesla, we should have wireless energy by now. In fact, the, the chap on Redacted, he done an awesome video about Nicholas Tesla just the other day. It was a documentary that he premiered. It was really good. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link in the top corner there. It's awesome. But I've also done a video of my own that's on free energy and how we ha how it's been suppressed. And the fact that we've got enough there right now to solve all of our energy crises put together. Uh, there's loads of technologies that have been suppressed, not just those by Nicholas Tesla, but like um, hydrogen power cells, actual power stations, mini power stations, the size of a suitcase that could power your whole house uh, or, or your whole street even. But uh, anyway, I'll put that video up there as well. You've got to check that one out. It's freaking mental. Semolina Pulchard climbing the Eiffel Tower, elementary power penguin singing harry krishna man you should have seen them kicking edgar Allan poe so there's a lot to digest there too but i think this is all about sort of intermixed sort of um uh, religions and how they climb how they fall all that sort of stuff and how religions end and how new religions are birthed and how religion is almost being pushed asunder by the elitists by sort of corruption of of, of people's faith to be honest i mean they do it little by bit little they've been chiseling away and chiseling away if you look at how many people are now christian in this country for example it's it's almost like if you're christian then yeah you, you believe in santa claus or something it the belittling of religion is what i get from that i mean and take a take that with a pinch of salt but there we go there's a lot to digest in here i'm not even going to go into all this oompa loompa type stuff and stick it up your jumper and all that sort of Thing. I think this is just pulling your wool over your eyes and if you don't see the truth then you're a sheep you know you're a slave and you've got all this stuff here that goes into the whole sl slavery type stuff and the whole thing that we're dying and all that sort of thing and you know, and, and there's mentioned it's almost it feels almost biblical when you read into this as well but yeah and there's things about um the, the politics so it's almost like the elitists are crushing religion and they're stifling you and they're killing faith that's what I get from all this last part here and that we are in a slavery and they've pulled the wool over your eyes. Yep, so that's that's pretty much what I get from I Am The Walrus. And we've already gone through Lucy in the Sky. And we've got the lyrics of the Yellow Submarine where they talk about going to a land beneath the waves of yellow and green. Now we have seen sorts of things inside of modern movies, including the Pirates of the Caribbean. So I'm hopefully, with the screen that I've got it here, hopefully it's not going to flag me or anything. And I'm just going to play a very small segment of this. So, you know, I'll shut up and I'll play you this very small segment. I'm having some tea. Okay, so inside of the Pirates of the Caribbean, at sunset, there's a flash of green on the horizon. And when they do that, the world sort of rotates and they go inside of the inner sanctums of the world and they go into Davy Jones's locker. So, and there's talks of yellow and green in a lot of these Beatles songs. And whether you believe it or not, I kind of feel that they're hinting at one of the entrances into the North Pole or the South Pole or whatever. When you look at the Aura Borealis, the Aura Borealis. Let me see if I can just add that in. Aura Borealis. There we go. Um, let's go for that one. Boom. 
The aurora borealis is a sort of greeny sort of glow that you get over high magnetic areas and magnetic waves of the planet colliding with each other. However, some people suggest that that sort of green hue that appears in the sky is actually sunlight coming from the inner Earth into the night sky and lighting it up and causing these effects inside of the night sky from the hollow Earth. Now, there's a lot of hollow Earth theories. It's like um, this one here that the whole freaking little galaxy that we're in is actually enclosed inside the Earth. Don't, I don't believe in that one. I believe in this one. So this little doodle, this little drawing here is the one that I believe in. Um, can I make that bigger? It's going to take me over to the telegraph. The telegraph is, is a bit of a git because you can't actually get to what you want to get to. You've got to start your free trial and all that sort of stuff. But that's the image that I want to make bigger for you guys. Um, let's see if we can find it somewhere else. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum, big thing. There we are. What about this one? Is this going to let me make it? No, it's not. Balls. Okay. Um, they've, they've nicked it from this one. This is the one that I need to see. Let's see if I can open that in a new tab. Just the image on its own. There we go. There we are. That's pretty much it. So there's all the different entrances over there to the Hollow Earth. Uh, can I open that one in a new... Just the image. Just the image itself. I want it center of the screen. Boom. There we go. That didn't take too long, did it? Fact or fiction. But look, it even shows sources to Venus coming out of here. And there's all sorts of lands in here, like New Schwabia and... Yeah, New Schwabler, New Berlin, basically. I mean, the German U-boat went missing inside of there and set up camp and all sorts of things. Land of advanced races and the central sun, but it's more yellowing, yellowy green in colour. And hence the Aura Borealis, where you see the light coming out from the inside of the planet to the opposite sides, which is pretty interesting. I mean, make of this what you will, people. But I'm wondering whether the Beatles knew of the inner Earth and also the elite and the sort of, you know, the oppression that they have over people and the populace and the Illuminati as a whole. That's where I'm going with this, people. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> All right, okay. I just had to get this out of my mind and out onto the freaking internet. I mean, it's, uh, I don't think it's a conspiracy theory that I've come across. So there you go, I just made one up. Cheers. Well, that's a good morning, isn't it, for thought-provoking type stuff. I hope it raised a smile. I hope it raised an eyebrow. I hope it sort of made you think he could be onto something. But I kind of feel that Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds, even the Beatles themselves, said, no, it's not about LSD. That is just, you know, it's just coincidence. And that's not what it was intended to be. And I believe one of the Beatles actually said that it, it's actually about a drawing that one of their nieces done or, or one of their family friends done, a child done, basically, of a person in the sky with a load of stars, is what was said. Which sounds suspiciously like uh, Lucifer falling from the heavens. <laughs> so, yeah... I kind of do feel that they've used that as a reference to Lucifer, and I feel that Lucifer is a representation of the Illuminati and the New World Order and the power elites that are suppressing information. And I kind of feel that maybe there is some truth to that Richard Admiral Byrd's diary entry, which I've done a video on, so go check that out. And also the suppression and control of people. And I kind of feel that that's what those three songs are about. And there's probably others as well, you know, like the Glass Onion that I could have used as reference material inside of this video because there's a little bit of that in there too. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to touch on it. Look up the Glass Onion lyrics if you're interested by the Beatles because that's got a little bit about the man on the hill and sorts of other things that you could probably pull into this yourselves being, you know, the savvy people as you are, people in a view of us. Anyway, until next time, I hope you liked this video. Yeah, sound off in the comments. Let us know if you did. And I, I might do more. I mean, I've done a lot of Captain Steve's. Are they real or are they fake? But this doesn't kind of fall into that category because I, I haven't heard this really brought up before. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.